lab number 255. In this lab we will add push notification capabilities to our application. And actually we will start uh, with configuration of uh, push notifications in our console. So for that let's open the browser and navigate to our local host port 9080 MFP console. So from there we need to go to our hybrid messenger application and then to push. So here on push settings uh, we should actually configure credentials to our Google Cloud messaging uh, service. Uh, so for that we need to go to Google API console that was recently uh, renamed to uh, from, from uh, Google API console to uh, Google Developer Console. So log in using your credentials. So once you will get inside, you will need to go to Google Cloud Messaging and make sure it's enabled. If it's not, then enable it. And after it's enabled, so you can go to credentials and create a new uh, server key. and create the new server key. So just uh, select the PI key and their server key. You can name it whatever. Uh, you don't need to fill any uh, specific API addresses or anything, just click create. And this is the API key uh, that we will use. So copy that and go back to operations console and put it as server API key. And we also will need to get information about projects. So just click on project information down there and copy the project number from here. It will be the sender ID. Again, we will need to fill it inside the console and from there we can click save. So the second thing that we will need to define is we will need to define tag. So uh, tags are uh, now the main approach of sending notifications. So you will define set of tags and people will be able to get a list of tags and to subscribe to tags that they want to receive notifications. So when you send notification, you can send to all devices, to devices by platform, uh, or you can also send it to a specific tag. So let's have a tag, something like messenger. And I will just put the same description here and click save. So this tag is defined and now everybody who will subscribe for this messenger tag will be able to receive messages that will come to it. So now we can uh, go back to our application. So uh, we will use one more provider. I will create here a service, uh, something like push service. And we will do it using our terminal. So I'll open a terminal window and type ionic g uh, means generate provider, same as it was last, last uh, time. And uh, from there we will provide a name, something like push service. So here we have it. Right here, push service. So same as last time, by default it created the JavaScript file and we will need to rename it to actually TS. And once we will rename it, we will also need to remove the HTTP part. We don't need it from here, from constructor also. And basically we don't need all that stuff. Inside load also and the data is not needed. What is actually needed is once the load uh, will be called in this service, we will need to initialize push using MFP push API. So from there uh, we have initialize uh, and uh, we will need to provide a few callbacks. So first one will be uh, in case of success. So something like success response. And second one will be in case of failure. Something like failure response. Let's add some login here. 
so just for debug purposes, something like uh, push init success. And in case of failure, we will get push init failure. And then we will also provide here our failure response. Just like that. So in case we successfully initialized uh, push, uh, we can now register our device. So uh, again, MFP push API, then register device. Uh, and then basically again to callbacks. The same approach. So let's have success callback and also failure. Just like that. And again, login. So um, in case of success, we can say uh, push device register success and failure for failure. And just hang it. And finally, after device registration, uh, we can here define some kind of tag or a list of texts uh, that we will subscribe to. In our case, uh, as you remember, it is only one messenger as we named it inside our operational uh, console. So messenger and uh, now when we define a tag, we can say uh, MFP, again, push, subscribe. And then as a parameters, uh, we need to provide tag. And after providing the tag, we can define the callbacks. just like that and again the logging final step uh, push subscribed uh, subscribe success let's skip it this way and failure um, Okay, so this step is done. One more thing that we need to do is to uh, define a callback in case uh, push is uh, received when the application is open. Because by default it will show nothing and you will see push only if the app is closed. If the app is open, you need to define a callback to do something with that push. So let's have it here uh, right on the same level as registered device. So again, MFP push and then register notifications callback. And inside we need just to supply a function. So something like push um, notifications received. Let's call it this way. So this is our callback defined and now we need to actually define this function. So something like function, then the name of the function, then the message that we got inside. And uh, basically we can just do a console login. Something like push notification received and then define this message. 
and additional to that we can display the alert something like alert uh, message alert so message uh, alert will be actually the data that we will get uh, together with that we will also get have a st timestamp but the alert is the way how to access the message text that we will receive so basically that's it we can save this uh, push service and uh, we will need to define it uh, in our app ts file just the same way as employee service was defined So first importing push service So uh, okay the URL is right uh, then we need to uh, add a provider here Just like that, push service. Uh, then we can actually init it right in uh, AppTS so it to be available across all the pages and so on. So let's add a reference, just push, let's use it this way. And just define a variable again. Okay. And here, uh, where we did the authentication uh, init, we can also do a push init. So in our case, it will look like push lot to call our push service and uh, from that to call the load function. So one more thing that we need to do is to go to the console and then navigate to our application security tab and from that to add scope element mapping, one more. And this one should be push.mobile client. So for now, we won't do any kind of security check mapping if it will be just the scope that will need to be defined. Otherwise, we won't be able to sign for a push and receive push and so on. So um, after that, we can actually go uh, save our AppTS file and check if the push will work. Okay, so as you can see, push device register success and subscribe success. Let's try to enter correct credentials. So now we are inside and now we can send push message. So the simplest way is to navigate back to push and from here to go to send notifications. But of course, uh, we can use REST API to call it from backend, uh, but just uh, in order to save time, we will send notification right from the console. So let's save it only uh, for devices uh, for a specific tag uh, who subscribe to it, messenger in our case. And notification uh, text, let it be something like uh, hello uh, world, just like that. So this is our alert. We see hello world message inside alert. So this is our push. Let's try to exit the app and uh, send one more push notification to see if it uh, will arrive when the app is closed. As you can see, it is arrived uh, for closed application. So when we will click on it, uh, it will actually open the app. And we will see that alert inside because we uh, handled that uh, notification also.
just like that. So uh, basically we configured push and uh, on this step our lap is finished. Thank you.